Today's video is brought to you by Audible, the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and one of my favorite services in existence. I use Audible pretty much daily, and just to show that, here's a log of my listening hours on a monthly and lifetime basis. With Audible, you can download and listen to your favorite audiobooks offline, anytime and anywhere. The app is free and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets, and you can listen across devices without losing your spot. There's also the new Audible Plus catalog, which gives membership even more value and lets members access new features and formats like the exclusive words and music series or podcasts you've never considered before. Recently, as some of you guys know, I've been going through the Halo books again. I started with The Fall of Reach and just finished Ghost of Onyx. The Halo audiobooks are really well done on Audible. They're all completely unabridged and they tell an exceptional story that goes far beyond the games. Right now, you can get a free Audible trial for 30 days, including one free audiobook by going to audible.com com slash Eckhart's letter or texting Eckhart's letter to 500 500. Thank you so much Audible for sponsoring today's video. Now on with the content. Somewhere quite far from here lies the planet Lagash. Lagash is a terrestrial world with an advanced civilization, a civilization which is both very similar and very different to our own. Lagash is in a solar system with six stars. Well, let's not call them stars. Let's call them suns. The orbit and position of Lagash is such that the planet is always lit on all parts by at least one star. This has led to a dramatic divergence in how civilization and even how humans as a species have evolved on Lagash versus Earth. Nighttime is unknown to Lagashians and darkness is not seen as a normal part of human existence. According to a Lagashi psychologist, a baby is born with three instinctive fears of loud noises, of falling and of the absence of light. This distinction, however, as mentioned, does not seem to be borne out by a biological difference, but rather the cultural effects of a civilization born in a planet that never sees darkness. It's interesting to think about all the ways that would affect technology and society. One example is the fact that despite having some advanced science, including electricity, telescopes, and cars, Lagash has not invented the light bulb and also does not routinely use fire for light although they do recognize that it gives off light. It seems like most buildings and rooms are also built with windows facing the exterior. There are of course a few exceptions to this, but they tend to prove the general rule. One example is the Tunnel of Mystery, which was a feature at the Jonglor Centennial Exposition. The Tunnel of Mystery was a tunnel through the earth which was not lit. It was treated essentially like a horror or thrill attraction. How'd this affect the people who went on the ride? Well, well, several died, and one person out of ten who went into the tunnel apparently came out crazy because of mankind's instinctive fear of the absence of light. The tunnel journey itself only took 15 minutes. This all brings us to the question, the premise of the story. What happens to a society which does not know darkness when their light disappears? The scientists and physicists of Lagash have managed to develop a theory of gravity. As was the case on Earth, science began to show the essential nature of the universe, first disproving a heliocentric theory of the universe, and over the course of 400 years, eventually becoming advanced enough that scientists could describe almost everything about the physical nature of their planet in the universe. At least, so they thought. However, there was one small problem. As the theory of gravity advanced, Lagash scientists noticed that small fluctuations in the orbit of the planet could not be described by Lagash or its six suns. Thus, scientists hypothesized the presence of another non-solar celestial body, specifically a moon to Lagash or a companion planet, which typically could not be seen because of the overwhelming brightness of the six suns. With that new information, physicists were able to plot the trajectory in the orbit of the new planet and discovered something disturbing. Every 2049 years, there would be an eclipse. An eclipse when the beta sun was alone in its portion of the sky, meaning that the eclipse would shroud the planet in darkness, and more than that, that the eclipse would last for over a day and a half, and that through that time, the entire planet would fall under its effects. Now, this was obviously troubling to the people of the planet, especially given their deeply ingrained fear of the dark. 
but it also helped explain some archaeological phenomena on the planet. Civilization on Lagash seems to evolve and then rapidly die in a cyclical form. The death of these civilizations based on archaeological records can be tied directly to the presence of an eclipse and thus the darkness. Even more disturbingly, these findings mirror the beliefs of an ancient cult, which follows what they call the Book of Revelations. The Book of Revelations states that every 2050 years, Lagash enters a huge cave and the suns are covered. In their darkness, things called stars appear, which rob men of their souls and leave them unreasoning brutes so that they destroy the civilization they themselves had built up. The notion of a star is not one understood by scientists on Lagash. Given that the planet is bombarded at all times by total light, Lagash astronomers believe, despite understanding complex physical realities like the speed of light, that the universe extends only as far as their solar system. They think the idea of stars may be based on real historical record, but that it's probably just a manifestation of the insanity brought on by total, and that they have no physical significance in the real world. Some however do recognize that the stars could in fact be other suns so far away that their gravity doesn't affect the orbit of the planets. However, that belief is based on the idea that if those stars do exist, that there's probably only a few of them, probably less than a dozen, and that reports of a night sky covered by stars is generally an exaggeration brought on by hysteria. Anyway, as the day of the darkness approaches, scientists prepare. Recording devices are set up in an observatory so that the cycle can once and for all be broken. This civilization will die, but hopefully the information and the data they record will be enough to protect future civilizations. They've also protected some valuable scientific members of society and their family in a vault, which they hope can be unsealed after the darkness so that people can rebuild. The scientists expect that, as the cultists do, the darkness will leave society in ruin that civilization has understood will be over. The cultists believe that the stars allow human beings to ascend, leaving only the brutish form of their bodies in their place. Scientists believe that given the fact that life is fundamentally dependent on light, that people going insane will burn down society, literally burn it down to create the only other source of light that they understand. Finally, the Beta Sun, now alone in the sky, is eclipsed by the unknown moon. Society on the planet experiences darkness for the first time. Or, well, not quite. Simultaneously, you heard one last choking gasp from Bine, and a queer little cry from Shirin, a hysterical giggle that cut off in a rasp, and a sudden silence, a strange deadly silence from outside. With the slow fascination of fear, he lifted himself on one arm and turned his eyes towards the blood-curdling blackness of the window. Through it shone the stars. Not Earth's feeble 3,600 stars visible to the eye, Lagesh was in the center of a giant cluster. 30,000 mighty suns shone down in a soul-searing splendor that was more frighteningly cold in its awful indifference than the bitter wind that shivered across the cold, horribly bleak world. Someone clawed at the torch and it fell and snuffed out. In that instance, the awful splendor of the indifferent stars leaped nearer to them. On the horizon outside the window, in the direction of Sorrow City, a crimson glow began growing, strengthening in brightness. That was not the glow of a sun. The long night had come again. Ultimately, it's the revealing of the true nature of reality and the scope of the universe which drives the people of Lagesh to insanity. I think we've all, as humans, had that moment, sitting outside in the darkness, looking up at the stars, where we've pondered the vastness of the universe. I think that's an almost universal experience for humans. As humans on Earth, we live half of our lives in the darkness of no sun. Stars are not foreign to us, but even still, looking at the night sky can definitely make you feel like a very small part of an incredibly massive universe, a feeling of being inconsequential. 
the people of Lagash, this is not something that they expected. And their entire worldview is ripped apart as they come to realize that the universe was not built around them. I think it's interesting to think about what would happen if your entire worldview and really view of the universe was shattered to a fundamental level overnight, literally. We've been talking about the story Nightfall by Isaac Asimov, the short story. There's also a novel of Nightfall, but I've heard that it's not as good as the short story, which is very punchy, despite being one of Asimov's longer short works. Aside from that aforementioned discussion, Nightfall has an interesting discussion about science and how it interacts with faith. Faith not only from a spiritual level, but faith in what establishes our assumptions and our understandings. The scientists on the planet believe that stars are mythical, a creation, because they believe that the universe is small and that there couldn't possibly be that many other planets out there. They believe that darkness is necessary for human survival and that a planet like Earth with only one sun could not possibly exist. That's interesting to think about because a lot of people in the real world use our Goldilocks position within a friendly star system as evidence of a divine creator. Imagine what that would be like in a planet that not only had to be perfectly positioned against one sun, but which needed perhaps six to provide total light. Maybe it's understandable then why the scientists believe the way they do, and that's an interesting comment from Asimov, I think, about that whole discussion. And I think it's clear what side he comes down to with the last passage which I read, talking about the uncaring nature of the universe. Another interesting theme is the effect of society on human behavior. One of the scientists even points out that children under six years old would probably not go insane because to them, a night sky would just be something else that they're seeing for the first time. So it's the breaking down of those things which have conditioned behavior, which is ultimately what causes the destruction of society. From a more sci-fi point of view, I also think it's really interesting how world building can be done in a way that makes this sort of stellar setup interesting. Of course, they haven't invented lights on this planet planet. Why would they need to? Cars? Sure. Electricity? Sure. But in a planet with constant light? Well, just have windows. Anyway guys, that is all for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check out the short story, I've linked it down below in the description. Let me know, would you like me to cover more short stories? I've got three or four that I kind of read tonight that I definitely want to cover soon. But if there's any that you would like to suggest, feel free to pass that on in the comments. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, have a good one, be safe, and may the force be with you.